So here we are for our fifth year of the best and worst screen protectors videos. And this year we're gonna be testing out the brand new Galaxy S23 Ultra. And to everybody who's left me a comment in the past videos, letting me know that I've saved them a lot of time and money by doing this videos. Thank you so much for all your support. And if you're new here and you wanna show your support for my channel, all you need to do is hit that like button to show me that you care that I'm doing this for you and consider subscribing to my channel. Now, as you can see, there are a ton of different screen protectors we're gonna be testing today. And actually, some of the screen protectors in this selection were recommended by viewers like you. So if there are screen protectors out there that you'd like to see me include in these future videos, definitely let me know in the comments. And I will also be putting links in the description in case you guys wanna pick up any of these screen protectors yourself, as well as timestamps, because this is going to be a lengthy video, but, Stick with me because I guarantee you're gonna find one screen protector here you're gonna absolutely love. And in case you're interested, I also do have a best and worst cases video for the Galaxy S23 Ultra, and I'll put a link to that in the description as well. I've also read all your comments in the past videos about wanting me to recommend what screen protectors that I would personally use, and I will be doing that at the end of the video as well. But for now, grab your snacks, sit back and relax, and enjoy the video. So really quick before I begin, I just want to let you know that before I install every single one of my screen protectors, I will thoroughly clean off the screen with an alcohol wipe and then thoroughly dry it off and remove any dust so I don't have to show it to you every single time. So first up, we're going to take a look at Base's Plex Shield screen protector. So here we get our instructions, our screen protector, an installation guide, a squeegee, and an installation packet. Then take your guide, make sure that you see the signifier top at the top here, and we're gonna place our phone with the camera towards the top of the guide, just like that, and then press it into place. You can use the dry wipe so you don't get any fingerprints on the screen. Use the dust sticker to remove any dust. Then take your screen protector, make sure that the green tab is at the top of the screen and underneath. We're going to peel that off. Make sure you don't touch the underside after you've done so. Then we're gonna put the little guide holes over the guides of the guide here. Try not to touch the screen. And then do the same thing for the bottom here. Once you've done that, we're gonna take our squeegee. We're going to press in the middle of the screen here and then just squeegee towards the top of the phone and then turn the phone around and do the same thing. Start from the middle behind the line here and then just press towards the back of your phone. So as you can see, there are no bubbles. Then what you wanna do is kinda of take the squeegee and push it towards the edges of your phone. Do the same thing for the other side. Then what you wanna do is lift up the little tabs on the bottom here and we're going to peel off the top layer of the screen protector just be very careful not to peel up the actual screen protector itself and then you can take your squeegee and get out any bubbles you might see and then take your phone out of the guide and then we'll take our wipe and we'll just wipe down our edges just to make sure that they're sticking down nicely and there we go. Installation wasn't too bad. And the nice thing about this screen protector is it does have a little bit of firmness to it. So if you do happen to see some bubbles on the edges, you can typically just push those out with the squeegee. I do have a couple bubbles on the edge, but they should disappear over the next few days. As you can see, it doesn't come all the way up to the top of the the phone, so it should be case friendly. It does the same thing with the bottom here and on the sides feels pretty nice. There's just a little bit of resistance to the screen. Touch seems to be working just fine. Let's test out our fingerprints. Fingerprints seem to be working just fine. Now you may have to re-register your fingerprints if they don't work, but mine seem to be working just fine, so I don't have to worry about that. Now it does pick up some fingerprints, but you can very easily just wipe those away with minimal effort. And it also has a cutout for your camera on the top there, so you don't have to worry about it interfering with the camera. Now, I don't see any lifting on the edges, 
which is definitely a plus. And like I said before, this isn't like all the other flimsy screen protectors out there. This does have a little bit of rigidness to it, so that's definitely going to help out with the S Pen and scratches. Speaking of S Pen, let's go ahead and see how that performs with the screen. Very nice. It is pretty smooth. There is a slight bit of resistance, but again, that may be something that you want. But S Pen working perfectly fine with the screen. Let's go ahead and wipe it off and see if there's any lines left over. And there does not seem to be, which is definitely a huge plus because with some of the other more flimsy screen protectors, you will get lines when you use your S Pen. We'll try it out with one of our cases here to see how well it works with a case. All right, so as you can see, it does leave a little bit of an edge on the bottom and on the top, and it almost comes to the edges of the case. And I don't seem to see any lifting either. So you should be good with your case that you're going to be using. But really the only way to tell is to put it inside the case itself. But it does seem to be a case-friendly screen protector. And just to show you how well it works with fingerprints, I'm going to register one of my fingerprints here so you can see how good it does. So as you can see, there weren't any problems with me registering my fingerprint, and then when I want to use my fingerprint, it works perfectly fine. So if you're looking for a film screen protector that's easy to install, works well with your fingerprints, and doesn't leave any marks when you use your S Pen, I would definitely give this one a look, and I'm going to give this screen protector a thumbs up. Next up is a screen protector by Mouse. So this is a film type screen protector. You get two of those, an installation guide, and a cleaning kit. So first you want to take your guide. Make sure you have the top signifier pointing towards the top. We're going to take our phone, put the camera towards the top of the guide. You can press it into place using the little wipe so you don't get any fingerprints on it. Okay, you're going to take one of your screen protectors you're going to peel off the underside where it says peel off here. You need to be very careful because this doesn't seem to come off very easy. So you need to make sure that when you're peeling this off, it actually peels off the protective layer from the screen protector and not the whole screen protector from the top protective portion. It's very, it's a little confusing, but I'm gonna to try to show you what I mean. So this is the actual underside of the screen protector we're gonna install. When you're peeling this off, See, it's already starting to peel up the screen protector along with it. This is not the best design. So you need to make sure that when you're peeling this off, it peels up this, the protective layer off the screen protector and not the screen protect, protector itself. And it doesn't seem to want to cooperate here. Okay, so now you see how there's three different layers here? That's the top protector, that's the screen protector, and that's the underside protector. So it's <laughs> it's very difficult, just be very careful, and you can peel it off, hopefully without damaging the screen protector, just like that. So we'll peel off the rest of the way. Make sure the camera hole is pointing towards the top of the guide here. We're gonna line up the holes, just place this over those those holes, do the same thing for the bottom of the screen protector itself, making sure that it doesn't touch your phone. This is kind of, okay. You might need to hold it down because it's stretching a little bit. Okay, so, all right, so that's down just like that. They say to take your little plastic card here. We're gonna wrap it in the little wipe just like that. Then you're going to take your squeegee, push down on the very bottom here, and then just push forward over your screen protector. Now it looks like the bottom and the top here are kind of peeling up because of the tension. Uh, so we'll kind of just let that go for now. And then we'll kind of push towards the edges of our screen here. Doesn't seem to be working very well. 
So I'm just going to kind of let that go. And we're going to very carefully peel up the top protective layer of the screen protector. That is god awful. Okay, so if we look at the bottom here, as you can see, there was that bubble from it peeling up, which is definitely not good because there was there was so much tension from this side to the other side. There were there was no space for the screen protector to lay down on the screen nicely without there being any stretching. So now we're going to try to work out any of these bubbles. I can already tell you it looks horrible. Uh, I'm going to pop this out of the guide here and try to push down the bubbles with my thumb. Work down the edges. Doesn't seem to be working very well. This is definitely not, not fun at all. This is definitely not the way that I want to install a screen protector. So luckily it does look like I was able to push down uh, most of the bubbles, but we do have some in the middle here, which are not going to be very easy to push out at all because the screen kind of seems to buckle on itself and makes like a little crease. So there's that bubble there. There's a couple there and some on the sides. Not the best installation. It does feel pretty nice, nice and smooth. There is a little resistance. Let's go ahead and test out our fingerprints. So touch seems to be working just fine. It is nice and clear. Okay, so fingerprints are re-registered. We'll go ahead and test them out. Fingerprints seem to be working just fine after re-registering. Very nice. All right, so no problems there. Let's test out our S Pen. S Pen seems to be working just fine. There is a slight resistance, but it's not a lot. No problems there. Let's wipe off the screen and see if there's any marks. So I don't see any marks from the S Pen, which is definitely a plus. So I don't see any marks from the S Pen on the screen, which is definitely a plus. I'm going to try to get out that bubble one more time. So I was actually able to work out the little bubble on the bottom here. Not too bad, but there's still quite a few little bubbles on the edge. Hopefully they'll go away, but I'm not going to bet on that. As far as fingerprints goes, it does collect a lot of fingerprints, but you can easily just wipe those away. So no problems there. It does leave a little bit of an edge on the bottom and the top, so it should be case friendly. I'll put this in a case just so we can test it out. So as you can see, it doesn't come up to the bottom of the case and on the top and on the sides. It looks like there is a slight uh, little gap around the edge. So this screen protector should be case friendly. Now, because of how difficult the installation was and how hard it was to peel off the protective layer without ruining the screen protector, and as you can see, because of the tension when I was installing it, it's going to leave bubbles pretty much all over the screen. So there are other options that are much better than this screen protector. So I would tell you to stay away from this, and I'm going to give it a thumbs down. Next up, we have a screen protector by Ackle. Here we get a squeegee, some alcohol wipes, some stickers, our installation guide, a wipe, three screen protectors, and an installation guide. So first you're going to want to take your guide, make sure that there is the little S23U pointing up that goes up towards the camera on the phone, and just press this over your phone just like that. Next, take one of your screen protectors. Make sure that the little sticker is on the underside of the screen protector and the little camera cutout is towards the top of your phone. Peel off the underside sticker and don't touch the underside of the screen and just gently place it into the guide. Once it's down, you want to take your squeegee and make sure that you squeegee out the little fingerprint hole here. You don't want to see any bubbles. 
Once that's done the best you can, take two fingers, press down on top of the phone, and lift up on the guide gently. And then take your little wipe and press down on all of the edges of the screen protector to make sure it's down in place. Because that's where all the adhesive is. So if we look at the phone, that was a pretty easy installation. The only thing that I really don't care for is that fingerprint hole. It really bothers me. I don't know about you, but I really don't like to use screen protectors that have that hole because it's just visually, to me, it's annoying. How do you guys feel about that? Let me know in the comments below. But it does have a cutout for your camera, and it looks like it leaves a little gap at the top and on the bottom, so it could possibly be case friendly. We're going to test it out. As far as touch goes, it feels pretty much just like the glass that's on your phone, so that's pretty nice. Let's go ahead and test out our fingerprints. Okay, we're going to register. Seems to be registering my fingerprints pretty good. So that shouldn't be a problem there. Okay, so it's done. Now let's go ahead and test them out. Okay, so fingerprints seem to be working. Not bad, all right. Touch is pretty good. No issues there. Uh, I can see a lot of little dots on the screen and that's most likely to keep the rainbow effect down because this screen does not have adhesive all over the place. It only has it along the edges. So that's probably what that's there for. But the, the picture looks very clear. No interruptions with the camera because there is a cutout. So, so far, so good. Let's test the S Pen. See how well that works. I'm assuming it's going to work just as good as on the phone itself. Yeah, no problems with the S Pen. Everything working fine. There is just a slight resistance, but it's nothing out of the ordinary. S Pen working very nice. So let's wipe it down and we'll see if there's any marks. Uh, I don't even need to wipe it down because there's nothing on there. No marks for the S Pen, so that's definitely a plus too. As far as fingerprints goes, very minimal fingerprint smudges on the screen. So let's put it into our case. Okay, so again, it looks like we still have that slight edge on the bottom here, slight edge on the top, and it looks like the glass might come right up to the edge of the case here. No lifting. When I tap on the screen, I don't hear uh, any like pressing like you will on some of the other screen protectors that don't use full screen adhesive. So that's definitely a plus too. Our fingerprints, that one didn't work. That one did. Okay, still working. Yeah, it feels really nice. Installation was a breeze. <laughs> the only thing is if you can get past that little fingerprint hole, I think this one might be pretty good. Let's see how easily it comes off of your screen. That's something else I like to test because, again, sometimes when they don't use full glass adhesive, they pop right off of the screen. So let's go ahead and test that out. I'll very gently lift up and it comes off. So I don't know how well that's going to last. Uh, you saw I, I very, very lightly lifted up on the screen and it came right off. So that might be a problem, especially if you drop your phone, the jolt of the, or the shock of the hit might actually pop the glass screen off. That's something to worry about. But I mean, other than that, it's not really a bad screen protector. I just would like it to, you know, lay on your phone uh, or actually hold on to your screen a little better. I'm a little conflicted. I don't, for one, I don't care for this little this little fingerprint hole. And two, the biggest concern for me is how it doesn't really stay on your screen very well. So I would probably tell you to skip this one. There's other better glass screen protectors out there. So I'm going to give this one a thumbs down.
And since this is a tempered glass screen protector, we're going to test the scratch resistance. We're going to start off with a level 5. Typically, screen protectors that are tempered glass start to scratch at a level 6. We're going to move on to a level 6, and then a level 7. So if we look a little closer, you can see there are no scratches at a level 5. There are deeper at a level 6 and a little deeper than that at a level 7. So that's pretty standard for tempered glass screen protectors. Next up, we have Or Zero's tempered glass screen protector. You get two screen protectors and two installation packets. So there's no installation guide with this, so we're going to use some stickers to install this. So you're going to take your guide stickers. We'll put one down at the bottom here, and then we'll put another one at the top, just like that. So take your screen protector, make sure that the little camera hole is at the top. We're going to peel off the underside sticker just like this. Then just place this the best you can over your phone. I would turn the screen on so you could see the fingerprint sensor hole and line that up properly. Then once you have it down in place where you want it, just press along the edges. That's where all the adhesive is. Then what I would do is if you have a squeegee or a credit card or something, you want to make sure that you press down on the fingerprint sensor so there's no bubbles showing. So it should look a little like that. And then you can take your guide stickers off. It does look like it's a little off, but again, you can only do the best you can because there's no installation guide. Okay, so let's take a look at it. I can feel a little edge here because like I said, the installation is a little off. The screen feels just like the glass. Looks like it picks up fingerprints really bad. Let's test our fingerprints. So I lifted the screen protector up a little bit and repositioned it because it was really starting to bother me. So let's add our fingerprints now. Okay, there was a little bit of issues with uh, adding my fingerprints, but we finally got them added, so let's test it out. So it does seem to be working. Okay, it's a little slow, but it is working. Uh, like I said before, touch feels just like the glass that's on the phone. It is clear. Everything seems to be working pretty smoothly. There are a lot of those little micro dots, again, because this type of screen protector only has adhesive around the edges and not across the whole screen. So they use those little dots to try to keep the rainbow effect down. Uh, that may or may not bother you. The biggest thing that bothers me is that fingerprint hole. I really, I cannot stand that. Let's test our S Pen. S Pen working fine. There is slight resistance, kind of like the glass, so that's a good sign. And I don't see any markings from the S Pen either, so that's definitely a plus. Let's put it in our case. So it looks like there is a slight gap at the bottom, slight gap at the top, and it looks like it comes kind of right up to the edge of the case on the sides. I don't see any lifting, so that's a plus. Now, the biggest thing for me is, does the screen protector stay on your phone? Because like I did with the other one, I barely lifted up on the edge and the screen protector popped off. And that's not something you want because if you ever happen to drop your phone, the shock of just dropping your phone might cause the screen protector to just pop right off. And I can't recommend a screen protector that does that. So let's see how easily you can take the screen protector off of your phone. So I'm just gonna very lightly lift up on one of the edges and the whole thing just comes right off. So that's that's a big deal for me. Uh, like I said, something like that, I can't, I can't in good conscience recommend that you get that. And even with this fingerprint hole, I can't stand that. 
<laughs> everything else is good, but because there's danger of the screen protector popping off your screen, I would definitely tell you to stay away from this and I'm gonna give this one a thumbs down. And since this is tempered glass, we're gonna do a scratch test. We're gonna start off with a level five and we'll move up from there. Typically tempered glass screen protectors start to scratch around the level five or six, the better ones at a level six or a seven and higher. So again, like I said, we're gonna start with a level five. And we're gonna move on to a level six. And then finally a level seven. So if we look a little closer, there are no scratches at level five. There are at a level six and deeper at a level seven. So that's pretty typical for regular tempered glass screen protectors. Next up, we have super shields. Here we have two alcohol wipes, an installation guide, an installation packet, and two screen protectors. These are both film. So first you wanna take your little installation guide, make sure that the little nubs are pointing upward and you wanna push this into the USB slot in the bottom of your phone. Just be very careful, just press it in, just like that. Then take one of your guide stickers and you wanna put that at the top of your screen protector like this, just like that. Then what you wanna do is peel off the number one from the underside of the screen, just like this. And we're gonna line the little holes down at the bottom here up with the guide. You wanna press that into place. Then hold on to the little sticker and we're going to place it down over the phone, making sure that the camera is lined up with the little cutout here. Then press your finger across the middle of the screen. Then take your squeegee and just squeegee down from the bottom here to the bottom of your phone. Do the same thing towards the top. Then what you wanna do is take your squeegee, put it behind the number two here, kind of lift back up on your sticker, peel it back, and push forward with your squeegee so the screen protector goes up and over the top of your phone. Just like that. And we'll turn it around. We'll do the same thing for the other side. So again, put your squeegee behind the middle, lift up on the tab here, make sure the screen protector goes up and over the back of your phone and just squeegee out. Lift up a little bit just to kind of help it over the guide. There we go. And then what I would do is take your squeegee and kind of just press out over the middle of your phone, kind of like that, turn it around, do the same thing, just to kind of get rid of that little line that might come out. The next step we want to do is to peel off the number four. Now you need to be very careful with this because you don't want to peel up the screen protector with the top cover. So be very careful when you're peeling it back. Then what you want to do is take your thumb and kind of work down the edges just like that. We're going to do the same thing for the other side as well. Then we're gonna pull out our guide. And then just take your wipe and kind of wipe down the edges so they stay down. And then use your squeegee to get out any bubbles you might see. I have a couple at the top here. So the installation wasn't too bad. I do have some bubbles at the top here that will hopefully go away within the next couple days, but the rest of the screen looks pretty good. There is a very faint line in the middle here, very, it's super faint. I don't even know if you guys can see it, but I wouldn't really worry about that. As far as touch goes, super slick. Feels just like glass. Very nice. Let's test out our fingerprint sensor. So fingerprints went in really easy. Let's test them out. Fingerprints seem to be working just fine, very nice. Let's test our S Pen. S Pen works beautifully, nice and smooth. There really isn't any resistance, so that's pretty nice. Now we're gonna see if there's any markings from the S Pen. 
So there are ever so slight. There is some markings right here. Just a little bit right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. But there are very slight markings. And I was only using regular pressure too. So, I mean, you really can't see them. That's not horrible. Uh, but it's just something to note. It also looks like there's a very small gap at the bottom and at the top. So we'll see how well it does with the cases. My fingerprints. Picks up a little bit of fingerprints, but you can very easily wipe those away because the screen is so slick. Let's put it in our case. So it looks like it pretty much comes right up to the edge of the case. To the top, there's a slight gap. And on the sides, it looks like it comes right up to the edge. And I do see some little bit of lifting in the corner there. It may be a little different for you, depending on which case you use, but there's really no room for error here on the sides. It looks like it comes right up to it. So not a bad screen protector. Uh, if you're looking just to protect your screen from scratches. Uh, again, these bubbles, not horrible. They may go away in a couple days. The lifting, that could be a problem over time if dust ends up getting underneath the screen. Installation was easy. Seems to work pretty well with the S Pen. Um, if it wasn't for the case, the sides do seem to stay down. So it's not a bad film screen protector. So with all that said, I would probably give this one a thumbs up. Then here we have Rhino Gears Rhino Skin Shield screen protector. So you get one screen protector and one installation packet. So this isn't going well already. They want you to scan the QR code so you can watch a video on how to install the screen protector. So I went to the QR code and they want you to either register for your extended warranty or fit, forfeit the benefits. But when I click on it, it doesn't even work. So I can't even get to the installation screen. So basically what they want you to do to install this is to wet this screen protector down with water, then put it on your phone and squeegee it out with this little micro squeegee that they give you. So I'm going to peel off the screen protector here and then put some water on the back side of it. They actually want you to dip the screen protector in a cup of water. And then you can kind of move it around into place as you need. I'm not a fan of these wet installations at all. So once you have it down where you want it, you can use the squeegee to kind of get the water out just like this. I know I've made a mess. I'll kind of dry it off just a little bit here. And then we'll try to press down on these edges with our thumb. So there is the screen protector. I'm sure that over time, all these bubbles and stuff will come out. Installation can go either way because there's no guide. So you kind of just have to eyeball it. So it might be, you know, misaligned on one end. And that, that might definitely affect the, the way that your case fits. Trying to get all the water out is kind of a pain in the butt. Let's test out our fingerprints. Fingerprints seem to be working. Yeah, so fingerprints are working. Touch, you know, it's, it's a little sticky because it's like a grippy type screen protector. The whole thing is kind of sketch. The way that you can't register for your extended warranty so if something happens when you're installing it you can't re you can't return it the the way that they don't give you hardly anything to install it and you have to wet it with a you know a cup i don't know i would personally tell you to stay away from this and i'm going to give this screen protector a thumbs down how do you guys feel about these wet application screen protectors? I absolutely hate them. I think it's a lot more that you have to do for a screen protector installation when there's other screen protectors that don't need to do this that go on a 10 times better. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. 
Next up, we have Protect On. This is the Walmart brand. So here we get an installation guide, one screen protector, a squeegee, and an installation packet. Or they give you this really nice big cleaning cloth. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you take your installation tray, make sure the top is towards the camera on your phone, and just kind of press it over your phone. Just like that. Then take your screen protector. We're going to very carefully peel off the back. Make sure it doesn't peel off the screen protector, kind of like this other one we did earlier. Very carefully try to peel this off without taking the screen protector with it. I absolutely hate this. It just doesn't want to come off. Then you want to line up these little guide holes with the guides on the installation guide. Just like that, so the screen protector is not actually touching the screen yet. Then you want to take your squeegee. We're going to press down in the middle and squeegee up to the top. And turn around and do the same thing. Squeegee from the middle down back to the bottom. And then kind of squeegee out to the sides. And then what I would do is take your squeegee, kind of put it in the back here, lift up a little bit on these guides just so they release, and then press down again just like that. And then we'll do the same thing for the top here because the screen protector can't actually go all the way down until these are released. I don't know why they made it like this. God, these sides look horrible. Okay, so now very carefully lift up on the sticker here. Then take your squeegee and try to squeegee the best you can down to the sides. Turn it around and do the same thing for the other side. Then we're going to press our phone through the bottom, just like that and then try to squeegee out any bubbles you might see along the edges. So unfortunately, I do see a lot of bubbles on the sides. You can see that all along the edge here. These edges just do not go down gracefully. It's one of the worst parts. That's why I hate curved screens. What do you guys think about curved screens? Do you want them or would you rather the screen be flat like every other phone? Test out our S Pen. There is a lot of resistance on the S Pen because it is kind of like that rubbery type of material. The S Pen does, does work fine, but again, there's going to be a lot of resistance, a lot more than a regular glass would have. So now let's see if there's any marks on the screen from the S Pen. It doesn't look like there is, so that's definitely a plus. Looking pretty good. Let's test it out in our case. So it looks like there is a gap on the bottom and there's a slight gap along the top and on the sides it looks like it comes right up to the, the sides of the case. So there may be some peeling over time but I don't see any right now but it's just it's got those bubbles along the edge. Not really a fan of that. And it's got, like I said, it's got that kind of that, that grippy feel to it. I prefer glass. So we'll re-register our fingerprints. So it seems to register the fingerprints just fine. Let's test them out. Yeah, fingerprints working perfectly fine. Not bad. It is crystal clear, so you can see very easily. Touch working perfectly fine. No issues there whatsoever. So not a horrible screen protector, but these the bubbles on the side is what concern me. I, I just don't understand why 
they did that. It's it's like the middle is perfect, and then when you try to do the edges, it's just bubble city. And as far as the screen protector picking up fingerprints, it seems to pick up some fingerprints, but you can just easily wipe those away. No problems there. So the screen protector is not horrible. The installation could definitely be better. As far as touch goes, touch is fine. Fingerprint sensor works fine. S Pen works well, except for that super grippy feel. I don't know if you guys would like that. I personally don't like it to be that grippy. Um, and then I don't really care for these bubbles. So I'm kind of on the fence about this screen protector because there's there's some good things going for it, and then there's some things I don't like. One mainly are these these bubbles on the edge are just, they're horrible. So I would probably tell you to stay away from this one. There's definitely better on the market, and I'm going to give this one a thumbs down. Next up, we have a screen protector by Milamdoy. Now, this protector really piqued my interest because it's a tempered glass screen protector, but it seems to go on kind of like a film screen protector. So we're going to go ahead and see how good it is. Hopefully, it is really good. So we get three installation packets, three rear camera protectors, a squeegee, a little plastic pick, an installation mat, a guide, and two tempered glass screen protectors. So first you're going to take your installation tray, make sure that the 23U is facing upwards towards your camera. Just place it over the top and press down. Make sure it's firmly in place. Then take your screen protector and make sure that the sticker is on the underside and the little cutout on the top is going towards the camera on your phone. We're going to peel off the underside just like this. Make sure you don't touch the underside after you've taken it off. Now when you place the screen protector into the tray, you want to make sure that you press downward towards the bottom of the guide when you're installing it, and then kind of just let it lay down. Once it's in the tray, you want to press down on all four of the corners here. Kind of like that. Now you're going to take your squeegee and we're going to squeegee from the bottom all the way up to the top and you're going to press down probably as hard as you can without bending the little squeegee. Because as you can see in the corners, it's already adhered to the phone. So we'll press this down at the bottom here and then press down as hard as you can and just press forward all the way to the top. And it should look something like that. There's no bubbles in the middle. There are some at the bottom that we will get out. So now once you've done that, we're going to take the guide off of the phone. So make sure that when you're pressing your phone out to press into the part of the screen protector that's already adhered to the phone. So I just take my thumb, press it in the middle and kind of lift up on one end of the guide. So now what we're going to do is we don't have to press as hard for the sides, but we want to use some good pressure and we're going to start from the bottom in one of the corners that we've already pressed down and just kind of push up towards the top. As you can see, the bubbles do disappear as we're pressing down. That bubble right there, we're going to get out in just a second, but we're going to do the same thing for the other side. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So now we're going to work out this little bubble over here. We want to we want to press the bubble out to the closest part of the screen protector as we can, and that's going to be to the edge. So we'll kind of just press out towards the edge here, just like that, and that's gone. Now what they want you to do is to use this little piece here to kind of lift up on the screen protector to get out some of the bubbles. Uh, be very careful, you don't want to lift with a lot of force, just kind of enough to where it lifts up the screen protector so you can kind of squeegee those bubbles out. We do have a couple in the corner here, so I'm going to try to lift the screen protector a little bit to show you how that's done.
and that looks pretty good. So no more bubbles in the corner here. Uh, the ones at the bottom are going to be a little bit more difficult because I don't want to lift up the whole screen protector to get those out. So I'm just going to try to smooth those out without any lifting. I was able to get the little bubble out that was in the middle here. I just very carefully lifted up in the middle, pressed down on the squeegee, and then just kind of get the bubble out. So that worked out pretty well. We do have a couple bubbles at the bottom here. I'm really hesitant to try to even get those out. It looks like I might just be able to squeegee them out that way. There is still a little bubble in the corner here. I'm going to try this one more time. All right, so looking really clean. This so far might be my favorite screen protector. That installation was really, really nice. And again, it is a tempered glass screen protector. It feels nice and smooth. Very nice. There's a slight, slight bit of resistance, but it looks nice and clean as far as fingerprints goes. It doesn't seem to collect very many fingerprints and the little bit that it did, we can just simply wipe them away with minimal effort and it looks nice and clean. So far so good. Let's test out our fingerprints. Okay, fingerprints added. So we'll test those out. Very nice. Very nice. Working perfectly fine so far. Excellent. So fingerprints working fine. No problems there. Touch. Very smooth. Very nice. I like it. No problems with touch there. It's nice and clear. So that's definitely a plus. Let's test out our S Pen. See how well that works. S Pen working perfectly fine. There is a slight resistance with the S Pen, but it's not really that bad. Let's see if there's any markings from the S Pen on the screen. And I don't see any. Oh, that's awesome. So far, so good. I am super impressed with this. I'm so happy that I actually tested this one out. So let's go ahead and so let's put it in our case. So it does look like it comes right up to the bottom of the case there. There is no gap. At the top, there's a very slight, ever so slight gap at the top. On the sides, it does look like it comes right up to the edge of the case, but I don't see any lifting, even in the corners. Very nice, that looks so clean. So this is seems kind of like a unicorn so far. I'm really, really impressed with this. Fingerprint rejection is awesome. Fingerprint sensor works really nice. Installation was pretty easy and it fits perfectly inside of a case. So there's only one more thing to do and that's to test out these scratch resistance. So first up, we're gonna start off with a level five. Then we're gonna move on to a level six. And then finally a level seven. Oof, okay. So if we look closer here, as you can see, there are no scratches at level five. There are a little deeper at level six and even deeper with some kind of deep grooves at a level seven. So I am super impressed with this screen protector. I, this might even be better than the ones that use liquid adhesive. So I'm definitely, definitely gonna give this screen protector two thumbs up. So far, this is the one to beat. And then here are the rear camera protectors. These are made of tempered glass as well. And the installation's very easy. Just make sure you clean off all of your lenses and around the lenses with the alcohol wipe. And then you're simply going to peel this back just like this. Don't touch the underside once you've taken it off. Then you just need to line the holes up with the camera bumps on the back of your phone. And then just press that into place. And that's what it's going to look like now on your phone. 
Now the thing is, if you use something like this and you have a case that doesn't have the total cutouts for your cameras, you're not going to be able to use it. But let's see what happens when we use a case that has a total cutout for it. Okay, so it looks like it fits uh, perfectly fine. If you have a case with the total cutout, it seems to fit in there perfectly fine. So if we look at the side here, as you can see, the camera protector is pretty much flush with the case itself. So it should work out just fine. Just make sure that if you're using a case, it's going to have the full cutout for all of the cameras. Now as far as fingerprints goes, it does seem to pick up some fingerprints as you can see there. So you will need to wipe this off if you happen to touch it before you take any of your pictures. Let's see what happens when we take some pictures from the back here. So as far as the picture quality goes, it seems to look pretty good. I don't really see uh, anything wrong with the pictures here. It looks pretty clear to me. And as far as scratch resistance goes, we'll, again, we'll start off with a level 5. Then we'll move on to a level 6. And then finally a level 7. And if we take a closer look, we can see that there are no scratches at the level 5. There are very slight at the level 6 and just a little deeper at the level 7 here. So typical scratch resistance for a tempered glass screen protector. Then here we have the Spigen Neoflex optical film. So you get two film screen protectors, your installation juice, and an installation packet. So first you want to give your screen a couple sprays of the liquid. Next you want to peel off your screen protector. Then lay the screen protector in your hand like this with the part that's going to go on top of your phone facing you. Then we're going to spray that down with the liquid. Don't be shy because we don't want it to stick to the phone prematurely. Then try not to touch too much of it and we'll put it down on top of our phone. Then put it in place the best you can. Then you can use the squeegee to try to get the liquid out. Try to get all the liquid out that you can. Once you've done that, you can use the little wipe to kind of dry it off. I would kind of press down around some of the edges to kind of make sure that those stick down. All right, so let's take a look really quick. It looks like there is some sort of smudge or something on the top there. We'll see if we can smooth that out. Okay. So most of the little smudges you can pretty much get out with the squeegee and if there's any more ripples or anything left in the screen they should dry out and it should look pretty fine after a while. As far as touch goes it is nice and smooth. Um, for the most part again there are no bubbles. I really didn't, don't like the fact that you have to kind of place it yourself because when you're installing these screen protectors that use the liquid underneath and it may look like it's installed properly at first. When you start to squeegee out the bubbles, it kind of moves. Um, so it's kind of difficult to place these perfectly on your phone, but I, I did the best I could. Again, touch is very smooth. Let's test out our fingerprints. Okay, so fingerprints are re-registered. We'll test that out now. Fingerprints seem to be working just fine. All right, let's test out our S Pen here. S Pen seems to be working just fine. There is some resistance, not a lot. So I don't see any marks from the S Pen which is definitely a plus. Don't want to see any of those swirl marks, and I don't see any, so that's definitely good. It looks like there is a slight gap on the top, and there's a larger gap on the bottom, so it should be case-friendly, and it does not come all the way to the edge of the screen here. So it seems like it mainly tries to stay on the more flatter portion of the screen, which is definitely good. 
um, because it'll help with the lifting. So not too bad. Again, there are a little, there's some blemishes on the screen there, but hopefully those will disappear after it uh, gets done drying. Let's put it in our case. So there it is in the case. We do still have a gap on the top there and we have a gap on the bottom and it looks like we have a gap on the edges as well, just a little bit. So it doesn't touch any part of the case. So that definitely helps with the lifting as well. And hopefully it should be good with the case that you're going to use too. But the only way you're gonna find out is to actually use it with your case. Looks like we do have some bubbles on the, the edge here that you can just kind of smooth down. But again, that's not from the case. As far as fingerprints goes, it does seem to pick up some fingerprints, but you can easily just wipe those away, not a problem. And it's got a little cutout for your camera, so you don't have to worry about it messing with your picture quality. So, uh, all in all, it's not a bad film screen protector. Um, there are other options that don't include that liquid, so if you don't want to deal with the hassle of the liquid and get maybe a more perfect uh, lineup, then I would probably stay away from this one. But it's not a bad screen protector. It's just like I said, there are other screen protectors that offer a better installation experience and you won't have to deal with this liquid, which I absolutely hate. And if you guys have watched my other videos, you'll know that. But this does seem to be a good screen protector if you can get past the liquid and trying to line it up yourself manually. I would give this screen protector a thumbs up. All right, and then here we have the Zag Fusion XTR2 Eco Curve. So we get an installation tray, one screen protector, one film screen protector, and some installation tools. So first we're gonna take our guide, make sure that the little signifier on the top is pointing towards the camera of your phone. We're going to take our phone and place it into the guide, just like that. You can press it down a little bit with the wipe so you don't get any fingerprints on there to make sure it's in there nice and good. You're then gonna take your screen protector and very carefully peel off the number one. Now you need to make sure that you're only peeling off the protective layer and not the screen protector itself because I've done a couple other screen protectors like just like this and this is not easy to get off so just be very careful. Okay, so you're gonna peel off that number one. Make sure that the little camera slot is facing towards the top. We're going to put the little guide into the holes on the guide itself. Just like that, making sure the screen protector does not touch the screen yet. Then you're gonna take your squeegee. We're going to start in the middle, press down in the middle of the screen protector and just push towards one of the ends. Just like that. Then we're gonna turn it around and do the same thing. Then we're going to very carefully peel up one of the ends of the top protector. Once it's released, I would take your squeegee one more time and just kind of press down that protector again to make sure that it's sticking well. Then what you wanna do is very carefully peel up on that top protector. Now take your squeegee and we're going to squeegee down the little sides here where you can see there are some bubbles. And we'll do the same thing for the other side. All right, once you've done that, you can just kind of push your phone out from the back here and then take it out of the tray. And then I would recommend kind of wiping down the edges just to make sure they stick down really well. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the installation. It actually looks pretty good. Not too bad. And the screen protector also does block 40% of blue light as well. So that's why you saw the little blue tint on there. As far as touch goes, feels pretty smooth. There is a slight bit of resistance. Let's check out our fingerprints. Fingerprints seem to be working already. So if they are, again, you don't have to go back and redo them. 
but if you do have problems with the fingerprints, uh, I would definitely re-register them. It also does have a cutout for your camera, so you don't have to worry about it messing with your picture quality. It does look like it has a slight gap at the top here, and it has a bigger gap at the bottom. There, it also does not come up to the edge of the screen, which is good for cases. As far as fingerprints goes, it does seem to pick up some fingerprints, but it looks like you can pretty easily just wipe those away. Not bad so far. Let's test out our S Pen. There is quite a bit of resistance, but the S Pen seems to be working just fine. Check to see if there's any marks. So I don't see any marks from the S Pen, which is definitely a plus. Let's put it in our case. All right, so it looks like it doesn't come all the way up to the case, which is good. At the bottom, we still have a, a good bit of gap. There's a slight, slight bit of gap on each side of the phone, so it's not touching the case, and there is no lifting, so that's, that's definitely a good sign. Let's see how clear the picture quality is. We'll turn our brightness up all the way. Picture looks pretty clear. I don't really see that blue tint, which is definitely good. As you can see, it looks really nice touch very responsive no problems there very nice fingerprint rejection could be a little better but it does work really well with the s pen uh, depending on if you like that resistance or not i just like the fact that it doesn't leave any marks when you're actually using the s pen and it is case friendly so I'm pretty pleased with the screen protector. It does seem to be a good film option for your Galaxy S23 Ultra. So I would recommend it and I'm going to give it a thumbs up. All right, and then here we have the Rinky Privacy Dual Easy Wing Screen Protector. So here we get one screen protector and an installation packet. Then you want to take your little installation guide. We're going to take off the top. As you can see the little pins, you want those facing up and you want to make sure that you use the little insert that looks like a little half C. You want to push that very carefully into the bottom of your phone until it clicks in place. You're going to take your screen protector. You're going to peel off the number one from the underside just like this, making sure not to touch the underside. Then we're going to place the little holes over our posts here. Just like that, press those into place. Then you wanna hold on to the front portion here and place this over your phone. So to help to properly place the cutout for your camera, you can easily peel off that little piece underneath this screen here. So you can actually see how you're lining it up when you do the installation. That's something that I did not do that you can do when you install yours. Then you wanna take the top portion of your guide and place it over those little pins, push it into place. Then we're gonna take our squeegee. We're going to put it back here and lift up on number two. You can push up to that line as you can see the crease. Then push it back and make sure the screen protector goes up and over your screen and just push out. Just like that. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the other side. What you need to do now is to take off the little post. We want to put our squeegee behind that this little line here. We're gonna lift up on the number three here. Make sure you release all these from their posts. We're gonna lift up on that. Make sure the screen protector goes up and over. We're gonna pull out our little guide and just squeegee out just like this. Okay, all you need to do now is to peel up on the number four. Be very careful not to peel up the screen protector with it. Very carefully lift it up. And we want to make sure that we push down on the sides with our thumb to make it adhere to the sides of our phone, just like that. Do the same thing for the other side here. And you can kind of push that down to make sure that it sticks really well. You can do the same thing for the other side. 
This is a pretty nice option because now you don't have to worry about the sides of the screen protector lifting up, especially if you're going to use one of their cases. It'll be inside the case, so this will never come up, which is definitely a great option. I see some bubbles at the bottom here, so we'll just kind of squeegee those out. Okay, so I got those bubbles out. It seems to pick up some fingerprints, but we can just easily wipe those away. Touch feels nice and smooth. Very smooth indeed. Picture is a little bit dimmer because this is a privacy screen protector, but man, it is it is like butter. It is so, so smooth. Responsiveness is very good. No problems there with touch. Awesome. So watch if I turn it to the side. Can't see the screen. That is neat. <laughs> that is so cool. It's like a magic trick. All right, so let's test out our fingerprint sensor. So that doesn't work, not a problem. We'll go in and register our fingerprints again. Okay, we're all done there, no problem. Let's go ahead and test it out. Fingerprints seem to be working without any problems. Very nice. So let's test out our S Pen. S Pen working fine. There is really no resistance with the S Pen, which is awesome. Glides very nicely across the screen. No problems there. Now let's see if there's any markings on the screen protector. So it does show some markings uh, with the S Pen. This is a self-healing screen protector, so I would hope that they would eventually disappear, which I'm assuming they will uh, because they are kind of just fading away right now. But if you're going to be using your S Pen, that's definitely something to know about. So now let's put it in our case. This is one of Rinky's cases. Fits in there really well. If we look at the bottom here, you can see that there is a slight gap, so it's not touching the bottom of the case. And also in the top, there is a gap as well. On the sides, of course, the screen protector is touching uh, because it does wrap around the phone, but it looks pretty good. So if you're looking for a privacy film screen protector, Rinky's is one you can definitely take a look at, and I would give this one a thumbs up. The one thing I did notice for the camera cutout, it is a little off center, so I might have needed to kind of maneuver the screen protector over when I was installing it. But I think that was due to the installation that I was doing and not something with the screen protector itself. And then here we have Fortress's Contour Fusion Fortress screen protector. It's got a lifetime warranty and a $200 oath. So with this you get one film screen protector, an installation tray, a squeegee, and an installation kit. Then you're gonna take your installation tray, you want the top signifier to be towards the camera on your phone. We're gonna take our phone and put it into the tray. You can take your wipe and press down on the screen to make sure that it's properly in place. Then you're going to take your screen protector, make sure that the little camera cutout is towards the top. We're going to very carefully peel off the little part that says pull, but when you're peeling this off, make sure that it doesn't take the screen protector with it. Make sure you don't touch the underside. We're going to place the little guide holes on the guide posts. Do the same thing for the bottom. So it'll look just like that. Then you're going to take your squeegee. We're going to press in the middle and then press up towards the screen here. While you're at the top of the screen, I would... While you're holding the squeegee at the top, I would definitely keep pressure and then release the little tab at the top here. just like that, and then press down the rest of the way. Do the same thing for the other side. We're going to place your squeegee behind the part that's already down, and then we're just gonna squeegee forward. 
and then while we're holding it, release the little tabs at the end here and then continue to squeegee the rest of the way. Then very carefully, we're going to lift off the top protector And then we're going to squeegee down the sides. Then to get your phone out, just press from the back of the guide and pop your phone out just like that. So it does look like it's a fingerprint magnet and there's this line on the side of the screen protector that I cannot get out. I'd most likely have to maybe lift the screen protector up, but that shouldn't be there at all. So that's definitely not good. Like I said before, it does seem to pick up a lot of fingerprints. It is pretty smooth to the touch. You can just easily wipe away those fingerprints. That's not horrible. Let's test out our fingerprint sensor. Okay, fingerprints are registered. Let's test them out. Fingerprints seem to be working just fine. Touch is fine. It's also nice and clear. No problems there. Let's test out our S Pen. S Pen seems to be working just fine. There is some resistance, maybe a little more than I would like but the S Pen is working just fine. Let's take a look at the screen now. I don't see any markings from the S Pen, which is definitely a plus, so not too bad at all. It does look like it comes almost to the top of our screen here, and it does have a little bit of a gap at the bottom. As far as the sides, it doesn't come right up to the sides. There is a slight, slight gap. Let's put it in our case. So again, there's, it doesn't touch the case of the bottom, and it comes right up to the top of the case up there. So there might be some problems maybe with some other cases. I do see a little bit of buckling in the corner there, but uh, nothing significant yet. It looks like it comes up to the edge of the case itself. I do see some bubbles showing on the sides if you guys can see those right there there's some bubbles and there's some bubbles on the other side as well but not too bad like i said fingerprint sensor is working installation could have been better this line here it may go away uh over time but i'm not willing to bet on that that's really an annoyance it seems like these the edges are the hardest things to get properly because if the bubble starts in the middle of the screen it's really it's a lot harder to get it out so it's definitely not the best installation but it's probably not the worst um, it seems to be working with the fingerprint sensor uh, s pen works well with it case compatibility could be questionable because of the top and the sides I would probably tell you to stay away from this one because of that, uh, the, the way that it fits with the case and because of the installation, and I would give this one a thumbs down. All right, and here we have Whitestone Dome's UV Gen Film. So here we get two screen protectors, two installation packets, our installation tools, and we get a little UV light that you will need a power bank or some way to power this for the installation. It uses USB Type-C. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to clean off your screen thoroughly, then dry it off. Then you're going to want to open up one of your film screen protectors. Now make sure you do not do this with any sunlight coming down on top of the screen protector because it will prematurely cure the adhesive. So first we're going to take our little foam bump and we're going to place it down on our desk. And then put your phone up against the bump just like that. Then you're going to want to take your little guide here. Make sure that the little posts are facing upward. And we use the one little side that looks like a little C. We're going to push that into the bottom of our phone. 
Next, take one of your screen protectors. Make sure that the little hole for the camera is facing up towards the camera on the phone. We're going to peel off the underside here that says back. Make sure you don't touch the underside once it's peeled off. Then you're going to put the little sticker with the little holes over the guide posts. Make sure the screen protector doesn't touch the screen of your phone. And then you're going to hold the little piece up top here and align it in place with the camera. Once it's aligned, just press your finger across the middle just like this. If it's not aligned properly, you can always lift it up a little bit, make sure it doesn't come off the posts, and you can always realign it. Once it's in place, you want to take your squeegee, you want to put it behind this little line here, lift back up on this tab, make sure the screen protector goes up and over the top of your phone. Then we're going to flip this around. Put your squeegee behind the line here. We're going to lift up a little bit on these posts and then lift that up. And then again, push forward, making sure that the little piece goes up and over. And then just lift it up at the end to make sure it goes over the guide. Then what I would do is take your squeegee and kind of squeegee out the middle here because there will be like this little line. All right, then what you want to do is to remove your little guide from the bottom here. Next, we're going to lift up on the little tab here that says front. When you're lifting, make sure it doesn't take the screen protector with it. Then what you want to do is very carefully push down on the edges with your thumb just like this. Okay, once that's done, I would take your little wipe and just wipe down on the edges to make sure that it's stuck down. Now there is this little line in the middle here. You can try to use the squeegee to get it out. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm talking about, but there's like this, this line like right in the middle of the screen here. So you can try to squeegee that out. Once that's done, we need to cure the top, middle, and bottom for 60 seconds each. So next you're going to take your LED, you're going to plug it into either a power bank or a wall adapter. Then you're going to double press this little button here to start a timer for 60 seconds. It will automatically stop by itself. Then do the same thing for the middle. and then the bottom. Okay, so we're all done. Let's take a look at our phone here. There is a very faint line in the middle. I don't know if you can see that, but Whitestone says that that will disappear with a little time. It's not very noticeable if you're looking at the phone like you normally would, just kind of it's there if you look at it from the side in the light. Not horrible, definitely not a deal breaker. As far as touch goes, super smooth. Feels just like the glass on the phone, if not a little slicker. So that's definitely a plus. Other than that very faint line, there are no bubbles whatsoever on this screen protector. Very nice installation. Let's check out our fingerprint sensor. No problems at all putting my fingerprints in there, so let's test them out. No problems with fingerprints whatsoever. Very nice. Okay, so again, touch, super slick. Very nice, very responsive, nice and clear, and it has a little cutout for your camera, so again, you don't have to worry about it messing with your picture quality. It does have a little gap at the top of the screen there, and it looks like it has a slight gap at the bottom as well. It also doesn't come all the way to the edges, almost, on the sides there. Let's test out our S Pen. S Pen has a slight resistance, which it should, but it works perfectly fine, no problems there. 
Let's see if there's any markings from the S Pen. And I don't see any. Awesome. So no markings from the S Pen either. Very nice. As far as fingerprints goes, seems to pick up very minimal fingerprints. But you can effortlessly wipe them away. So let's put it in one of Whitestone's cases. This is their silicone case. Fits on there very nice. So it looks like we still have a slight gap at the bottom, which is good. On the top, there is a gap as well. And it looks like it comes right up to the edge of the screen. No lifting. Very nice. I love the way that it feels, just like glass, even though it is a film screen protector. So yeah, <laughs> installation, very easy. Fingerprint sensor works perfectly fine. Works very well with the S Pen. Does a pretty good job at rejecting fingerprints and it's case friendly. So I would definitely give this screen protector a thumbs up. So here we have UltraFit's tempered glass screen protector that does use liquid adhesive. So here you get three installation kits, our adhesive collection pads, our installation guide, three tempered glass screen protectors, three vials of a liquid adhesive, some tape to cover our buttons and ports, a razor blade, a very heavy weight, and our UV LED. So you will need some sort of power source to power this up during the installation. It uses USB Type-C. You can either use a power bank or a phone power adapter. All right, next you're gonna wanna get your installation tray. You wanna get two large absorbers and one short absorber. And we're gonna put them into the sides of the tray just like this. Just kind of press them in place. Just like that. Next you're going to take one of these black stickers and we're going to cover all of the ports on the bottom of the phone. So we're going to make sure that the little round end goes over our S Pen and then continue down the line. It should look just like that. And then just make sure to press it down. So it covers everything. So after you put the sticker on, you're going to want to clean off your screen. Then we're going to put our phone into our tray here, making sure you don't touch the screen. We're going to put the top portion of the phone inside underneath this little absorber here first, just like that. And then let it fall down into place. Just press it in. You can use the little wipe so you can press it down without getting any fingerprints on it. Make sure that your camera is at the top towards this little absorber. Next, you wanna take this little piece here. We're going to rest it in between these two little posts here, as close as it'll get to the case, just like that. Then we're gonna take one of our vials of adhesive. We need to make two bubbles. We need to make one big bubble in the center here, and then we're gonna make a second little bubble at the bottom here, not to go past the ends of these little absorbers. So first take off the red cap, untwist the little black portion on the top here. Then you want to hold the vial over the middle of the screen here and undo the little black cap. The liquid adhesive will start to come out. Again, make sure that the bubble in the middle is bigger than the one at the end here. Once that's done, you can maneuver the bubbles, you wanna make sure that they're in the middle, kind of the best that you can. Then take one of your screen protectors, make sure that this little piece down here is towards the bottom of the phone. We're going to peel off the underside just like this. Make sure you don't touch the underside after you've peeled it off. Then just rest the top down by the top absorber pad and then let it rest in place. One thing you don't want to do is to force the glass screen protector underneath the absorber here. Just push it up to the absorber until you encounter resistance and then stop and then just let the back end rest on this plastic piece here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pull this plastic piece away. Let this slowly lay down on top of the bubble adhesives. If the screen happens to move backwards while you're pulling this out, just pull it out the rest of the way and then use the plastic piece to kind of push the screen protector back in place. So we'll slowly release the screen protector. 
just like that. And then do not touch the screen protector. Just let the adhesive go all over the screen. It may take a few minutes, maybe up to five minutes, but do not press down on the screen protector while this is happening. So it seems like the liquid is done going all over the screen. So now we're going to take our weight and we're going to place it right over this little sticker for our fingerprint. Before you do that, make sure you get maybe like a Q-tip or a piece of tissue because when we put the weight down, most likely some of the liquid is gonna come out the ends and we can just kind of use it to absorb it. So it seems like there's a lot coming out of the bottom right here. And again, we're just using the tissue to absorb that. So once we're done cleaning up the excess liquid, you wanna get your UV LED. We're going to plug it in and place it over our screen protector and for 60 seconds we're going to move it back and forth. So plug it in and then put it over your screen protector and just move it back and forth. Now we want to remove the weight and cure for six minutes. Okay so after the six minutes we're going to take the phone out of our guide here all you need to do is turn it over and press your phone from the bottom through this little hole here. So just like this. Then slide it out. Now as you can see we did get some of the liquid adhesive down on the bottom but that's okay because all of our ports are covered. So I'd probably take something and maybe just wipe that up just a little bit to get that out of there. So now what we want to do is to cure for two minutes each side of the phone. And then move it down to the other side for another two minutes. All right, once that's done, just unplug your UV light. Then we're going to take off this little sticker here and then peel up the sticker on the bottom. Then take an alcohol wipe and we're going to clean up the edges of the phone where some of the adhesive might have gotten. And it cleans up fairly easily and as you can see my buttons on the side are perfectly fine as well as the speaker port on the top of the phone did not get any adhesive in it. So the installation looks pretty good. There are like some micro specs uh, on the top by the camera up here as you can see there. It's not a huge deal, but I think maybe I didn't put enough liquid adhesive uh, towards the top bubble. That's just something to keep in mind. The screen looks perfectly fine though. Touch, it's nice and smooth, just like glass. Let's test out our fingerprints. So the fingerprints are still working, but we're gonna go and re-register them just in case. So no issues put inputting my fingerprints again. Let's test them out. Fingerprints are working just fine. The screen is nice and clear. It's very responsive, no problems there. Very nice. Let's test out our S Pen. S Pen working just fine. There is just a very slight bit of resistance, which I like. No problems there. We'll test the screen to see if there's any markings. No markings on the screen from the S Pen. Looking really nice. I don't see any bubbles or anything anywhere else on the screen here. Looking good. Let's put it into our case. So it looks like there is a gap at the top, which is nice. And there is a very slight gap at the bottom here and on the sides it looks like the glass comes right up to the edge of the case. I don't see any lifting. As far as fingerprints goes, it does seem to pick up some fingerprints but it's glass 
and we can easily wipe those away with minimal effort. Looks pretty new. So not bad at all. Everything seems to be working pretty good. Installation wasn't bad. Uh, once you get through it, it goes pretty smoothly. Fingerprint sensor seems to be working great. S Pen works fine. Touch sensitivity is also great. So now let's move on to the scratch test. So first we're going to start off with a level 5. Then we're going to move on to a number 6. And then finally a number 7. So if we look at the screen protector, you can see that there's no scratches at the level 5. Let's see if I can get a better view here. They're so slight. Uh, just ever so slightly at a level 6 and just a little deeper at a level 7. Now these scratches are definitely lighter than other tempered glass screen protectors so it definitely does a much better job at scratch protection as well. So really don't have a lot of bad things to say about this installation or the screen protector itself. Those little bubbles at the top, like I said, they're micro, you can barely see those. And they also do give you two other screen protectors that you can try again if that really bothers you. But I really, again, don't have anything bad to say about the screen protector. Scratch protection is excellent. Fingerprint sensor works fine. Touch works fine. It does seem to be case friendly as well. So I'm definitely going to give this screen protector a thumbs up. So now I'm going to show you how to take the screen protector off. And the really nice thing about this is there is no residue left over once you take it off either. So I would either take my fingernail or you can take like a pick or a credit card or something like that and just start to lift up in one of the corners and you'll see that the adhesive will start to release. As you can see in that corner, the adhesive is starting to come up and then just kind of work your way down because if you lift up too much on one end you risk the protector cracking if it hasn't already as you can see the pick seems to work a lot better than your fingernail you can just kind of run it down these edges it's very easy to do and just work your way around the edge And then eventually it just pops off. And as you can see, there is no residue left on your screen, just some of the crumbs from when I was scraping it off. But once you take those away, you'll see that there is no residue left on your screen. It's just as clean as it was when you first installed it. And then here we have a couple tempered glass screen protectors that do use liquid adhesive made by Maui. The only difference between the two is one is a privacy screen protector and one is a clear screen protector. So the installation is the same for both of them. I'm going to go over the installation for one and then just show you what the other one looks like. We will also be doing a scratch test, a fingerprint sensor test, and the S Pen test. So first we're going to start off with the privacy screen protector. Here we get three installation packets, our installation tray, you get three screen protectors, your absorbing pads, three vials of adhesive, stickers to cover the bottom of your phone, a UV LED, which you will need a power source for. It uses USB type C, so you can use a power bank or a phone adapter. Here we have a rather large weight, a razor blade, and your little slide tool. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to take one of these stickers and we're going to cover up the ports on the bottom of your phone. Make sure that the round end goes towards your S Pen. Put it down on the bottom of the phone like that and then just run your finger over the edges to make sure that everything is all nicely sealed and covered. So it should end up looking just like that. Then you wanna clean off the screen of your phone, dry it off. Then we're going to take our tray here. You need two of the longer absorbers and one of the short one. We're just going to stick them in the little spots here, just like this. Then you want to take your phone very carefully not to touch the screen. We're going to put the camera end in first. That's going to go in underneath the little absorber and then just lower your phone down. You can use your little wipe to gently press in the rest of the phone. Then you're going to take your little slider. You're going to stick it in between these two little posts here just like that. Then you want to take one of your vials of adhesive, take off the red cap. 
Make sure you get a tissue or something because it might get a little messy. We're going to take off the little tab on the top of this vial. So then what we want to do is we're going to put two bubbles on the screen. One big bubble in the middle here and then a smaller one kind of right below it but not past the ends of these absorbers. So we're going to unscrew the little black cap and then the liquid will start to come out. Don't take the cap totally off because you're going to need it to make the second bubble. So when you're done, it should look something like that. You can kind of manipulate the bubbles just a little bit to get them in the center. Then you're going to take one of your screen protectors. We're going to peel off the underside sticker. Make sure the little camera bump is facing towards the top of your phone. We're going to peel that off and then don't touch the underside. Put the top portion of the screen protector down underneath the little top absorber and then kind of let it rest on the end here on your slider. So you don't want to push the screen protector underneath the absorber here. You just kind of want to put it a little underneath until you reach resistance. And then once that happens, just let the back end rest on your little slider here. Now, the next thing we're going to do is to slowly pull out this little slider. The screen protector may slide back with it, but that's okay. Just use the slider to kind of push it back against the little absorber pad. But again, you don't want to force it underneath the little pad here. So we'll slowly start to pull this out and you'll see that the bubbles will start to hit the screen. And then you can just release it. Again, if it moves back, you can kind of push it forward a little bit with the slider. Now the adhesive will totally cover the rest of the screen and you want to make sure that it reaches all over the screen before we touch anything. While it's doing this, do not press down on the screen protector either. Again, you're going to want to make sure you have some sort of tissue or maybe even a little Q-tip because once we put this little weight down on top of the screen, there will be some liquid adhesive that kind of seeps out of the side and we'll use that to absorb it. Okay, so now we're going to put the weight over this little sticker here for the fingerprint sensor. So it looks like the liquid adhesive has now is now flowing all over the place. So we're just going to absorb it the best we can. If the screen protector moves, you can always push it back into place with the little, the little slider. This adhesive has definitely gotten all over the place here. So I did end up putting a little tissue paper underneath the tray here because the liquid adhesive has gotten all over the place and I just didn't want it to get all over my uh, desk here. So now we're going to take our UV LED light and we're going to cure the screen protector for 45 seconds. Just kind of put this over the middle and then plug it in. Once that's done, we're going to remove the weight and we're going to cure for another 120 seconds. Now once that's done, we can set our UV light off to the side. Now we're going to take our phone out of the tray here, but be very careful because like I said, I saw liquid adhesive kind of flow all underneath here. So have a tissue or something ready just in case you need to make a little cleanup. But if you look in the back here, there's a little hole. So we're going to push through that with our thumb. And then we can take our phone out. So I got some adhesive on my hands. Looks like it got all over the sides of the phone, so we're gonna wipe that up. So I would definitely get a little alcohol wipe and clean up the rest of your phone. As you can see, it got all over the bottom of the phone there. Thank God we had the tape. So once we've cleaned that up, we're gonna cure the edges again for 30 seconds. All right, once you're done with that, you can peel off the bottom sticker here. Looks like all our ports are clean. Then you can also remove the little sticker where the fingerprint sensor is. All right, so I just cleaned it up a bit. Installation looks pretty good. I don't see any bubbles. Very nice.
feels just like glass very nice all right so there as you can see the screen touch feels just like glass nice and smooth very responsive to touch and as you can see you can still see the screen pretty well it does dim the screen just a tad bit because it is a privacy screen protector and then if we turn it to the side you can see everything kind of disappears and then if you look at it again you can see everything on your screen that is pretty cool so let's test our fingerprints we'll see if those work still so they don't work so not a problem we'll just go in and re-register our fingerprints which you should probably do anyway when you put a screen protector on there so no problem in inputting the fingerprints so now let's test it out fingerprints seem to be working just fine Yeah, no problems with the fingerprints. All right, let's test out our S Pen. S Pen working just fine. There is a slight resistance, just like the glass. See if there's any markings. And I do not see any, just from where all the dirt is. As far as fingerprints goes, it does seem to pick up some fingerprints, but you can easily wipe those away with minimal effort. I love that privacy, like, can't see it can see it <laughs> that is so cool so let's take a look at our case compatibility as you can see at the top there is a slight gap at the bottom there is a slight gap there and on the sides it doesn't come all the way to the edges there so now let's put it into our case so it looks like it on, comes right up to the edge of the case on the bottom here on the top, there is still a slight gap. On the edges or on the sides, it comes right up to the case as well. Not bad at all. It does seem like there is a little bubble at the top. And if you guys can see that in the top right hand corner, that's probably because it is touching the edges of the case. You're gonna have to try it out with the case that you have. Uh, it may or may not work. But as far as the screen protector performing, working with fingerprint sensor, installation, S Pen, case compatibility could be a little better. But uh, all in all, it's not that bad. And if you do happen to mess up, you do have two other screen protectors that they give you to try to reinstall it. So now let's do our scratch test. We're going to start off with a level 5. Then we're going to move on to a level 6. And then finally a level seven all right so as you can see there are no scratches at level five there are slight at a level six and a little deeper at a level seven so that's pretty much on par with all the other tempered glass screen protectors and if you want to take these screen protectors off it's very easy to do you could either use your fingernail or a pick which i recommend or a credit card and just kind of lift up on one of the edges until the screen protector releases which it did right there, and then just kind of work your way down until the whole screen protector just lifts off, just like that. So this is probably one of the better privacy screen protectors you're gonna get that actually works with the fingerprint sensor. So I'm going to give this screen protector a thumbs up. So now we're gonna take a look at the clear Maui screen protector. All right, so here is the clear version of the Maui screen protector that I just got done installing now curious enough with the clear version of this as you can see there's no cutout for the little camera so the camera does get covered with this screen protector some people might like that some people might not i know i don't really care i'd rather have as much as the screen covered as possible but it does leave a slight gap at the bottom here and we do have a slight gap at the top as well and on the sides it doesn't come completely over to the edge installation was pretty good it was actually better than the privacy screen one i had less of the liquid leak out which was nice screen looks pretty good there are no bubbles which is awesome as far as touch goes super slick just like the glass let's test our s pen 
S Pen working perfectly fine. It's nice and smooth. There is again a slight resistance, but that's just because the little nib in the pen is rubber and this is glass, but writes just perfectly fine. Let's see if there's any markings from the S Pen. And I do not see, which I would expect because this is tempered glass. So that's looking pretty good. Let's take a look at the screen. Touch responsiveness, very responsive. Everything's working just fine there. It is nice and clear. Definitely another plus. Let's put it in our case. So it looks like the screen protector does pretty much come right up to our case on the bottom. There is a slight gap at the top and it does come all the way to the edge of our case on each side. I don't see any lifting which is definitely a plus. Now the screen protector may or may not work for your case because every case is different and this one does come right up to the edge but it does look like it's working well so far. As far as fingerprints goes it does collect some fingerprints but because it's glass you can just easily wipe those away. No problems at all. Very nice. So just because I'm going to test the fingerprint recognition to show you how well it does recognize your fingerprints. I did have a couple times where it didn't recognize my fingerprints so I just want to give it the benefit of the doubt here. And I'm not pressing very hard at all. Just normal pressure. All right, no problems inputting my fingerprints. Let's test it out. Yep, fingerprints working perfectly fine. I am pretty partial to the regular clear screen protector. I don't really need privacy, but it's always there just in case that's what you prefer. But this is definitely a nice option for a tempered glass screen protector that works with your S Pen, works with your fingerprints, it's crystal clear and it should work with your case as well. And we'll also do our scratch test here. We'll start off with a level five. Then we'll move on to a level six. And then finally a level seven. Oh, it cracked. <laughs> so it looks like this because I took the screen protector off before I did the scratch test. I'll go ahead and lift it up anyway. So if we take a close look, as you can see, there's no scratches at a level five. There are slight a level six and deeper with a crack at a level seven. So it's pretty much on par with other tempered glass screen protectors. And as you can see, there's no residue left behind either. So I'm definitely liking these screen protectors and I would give this a thumbs up. And then here we have the IMBZBK tempered glass screen protector with liquid adhesive. And one thing I wanted to point out that this screen protector has that no other screen protector has out there on the market is the anti funger print. So here you get four tempered glass screen protectors, a USB A to USB Type C cable for the UV light, which is nice. We get our absorption pads, a slide block, a pretty heavy metal weight, some screen protector holders, our installation tray with little bubble level, four rear camera protectors four screen wipes, four vials of adhesive, and your UV LED. The only thing you're going to need is a power bank or a phone adapter that you can plug that USB type A to USB type C in to power your light. So the only thing I really don't care for is the fact that they did not give you any stickers to cover up the ports on the bottom of the phone because that's the one place on their tray that doesn't have any absorption. So I would definitely get some sort of sticker and just cover up all this on the bottom of your phone. I just used some guide stickers and covered up all the ports. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to clean off the screen really well and then dry it off. Then you're going to take your tray and your little absorbers and we're going to insert them into the little slots. So it should look just like that. Just make sure that the tray is on a somewhat level table and you're all set. So then we're going to take our phone, making sure not to touch the screen. We're going to put the camera end underneath the little absorber first, just like this. And then you can use your little drying cloth to push the phone the rest of the way down. Uh -huh. 
Now we're gonna take our little screen protector holders and we're going to insert them into the little slots. The red goes up at the top here, just like that. The green goes in the slots next to that. And the black goes down at the bottom. And then we're gonna take our little black slider here and put them, then we're gonna take our little slider here and put, put it right between these two posts, as close to the mount as possible. Then you're gonna take one of your vials of adhesive and take off the white cap. What we wanna do is make a bubble in the middle of the screen here, right between these two absorbers. So we'll turn it upside down in the middle of the screen and then slowly undo the black cap. Let all of the adhesive run out of the vial. Make sure there are no bubbles in the little uh, bubble of adhesive. Once that's done, you can put the black cap back on and discard the little vial. So as you can see, there's a big bubble right in the center of the screen here. Then take one of your screen protectors. Make sure that the little fingerprint section is down towards the bottom of your phone. And we're going to peel off the number one from the underside, just like this. We're going to place the top in underneath the little absorber. Make sure you don't force it underneath, but uh, you want it a little bit underneath the absorber and then let the back end rest on this little slider here. Then just make sure that the screen protector is lined up between these two little green posts. And we're going to slowly pull back on the slider, letting the adhesive touch the screen. And if the screen protector happens to move backwards, you can just use the slider to kind of push the bottom towards the top. Remember again, don't force it underneath the little adhesive pad here, but push it up to it to where you receive resistance. Now you just need to make sure that the adhesive covers the whole screen and there are no areas, especially in the corners, where the adhesive has not gotten to yet. Make sure you don't push down on the screen while this is working. You can get your little cylinder ready. I would also get a tissue ready because when we put the cylinder on top of the screen protector, adhesive may run out through the bottom or the corners and you can use that to pick it up. So it looks like all the adhesive has covered the whole screen. So you're gonna to wanna to take your cylinder and gently put it over the little sticker for the fingerprint sensor. Be sure to look at the bottom and on the sides in case you see any liquid adhesive coming out. You can absorb it with your tissue or Q-tip. I don't see anything happening now. So now we need to remove our little colored pegs. So now we need to plug in our UV light and we're going to place it over the middle of the screen, just like this. And we're gonna press the button once for 30 seconds. Then we need to remove the light, remove the metal cylinder, and we need to remove the sticker from the screen protector. Okay, once you've done that, we're going to cure the screen for another 30 seconds. Then we're gonna move the light to each side of the screen and cure that for 30 seconds each. Then once that is done, we're gonna take our phone out of the tray. If you flip it over, you'll see this big circle underneath. Just press your thumb up and the phone should pop out. All right, so let's take a look around. No leakage underneath, which is definitely nice. We look at the sides, looking pretty good. Looks like we might have a little bit of extra on the side here, but it doesn't look like it got uh, all over my phone. So now we're gonna take a alcohol wipe and we're just going to clean up our phone. And we can also remove our stickers. Uh, it looks like a little might have almost gotten underneath, but those stickers stopped it, thank God. That's why I'd always recommend covering up these ports before you do the installation. But we are all good. All right, so installation wasn't really that bad. 
looks really good. I don't see any bubbles whatsoever on the screen protector. Looks really nice. There is a very slight gap at the bottom of the screen here. There's definitely more of a gap up at the top. On the sides, there is a little gap. It doesn't go right up to the edge of the phone. As far as touch goes, feels just like glass. Very nice. We'll try out our S Pen. S Pen seems to be working just fine. There's only a very slight resistance, which you would expect from rubber on glass. Looks really nice. And I don't see any marks from the S Pen, which is definitely nice and expected because it is glass. Let's test out our fingerprints. So my fingerprints definitely seem to be still working from the first time I inputted them on the other screen protector. But if you have problems, I would definitely recommend going in and re-registering your fingerprints. That should take care of any issues and turn up the, the touch sensitivity too. Touch, nice and smooth, very responsive, no problems there. And it is crystal clear, looks really nice. Let's put it in our case. So I do have a little lifting in the bottom here because it comes right up to the edge of my case. So that might be a problem for you as well because there is no gap at the bottom. We, during installation, you might just need to push it up just a little bit more, more than I did. And then you won't have that issue because on the top we have, we have plenty of gap. There's actually a little bit more room where we could have pushed up the screen protector. So that would definitely take care of this little issue here. It looks like it comes right up to the case on the side. There's just a, just a very slight gap on the edge. And again, like I said, there's plenty of gap on the top. So if we would have pushed our screen protector up just a tad bit more, we would not have this lifting in the corner. But other than that, it looks really nice. Installation, again, like I said, it was beautiful. Uh, there was no leakage of the liquid. Uh, fingerprint sensor works. S Pen works. It looks crystal clear. And if we fix this, it would probably work with my case as well. So, so now let's move on to the scratch test. We're going to start off with a level 5 first. Then we're going to move on to a level 6. And then finally a level 7. So if we look at the screen protector here, as you can see, there's nothing at a level five. There is at a level six and a little deeper at a seven. That's pretty typical for these screen protectors. So that's definitely a plus there too. And if you're interested on how to take this screen protector off, you could either use a fingernail, a credit card, or if you have like a little pick, just stick that underneath one corner of the screen protector until it kind of releases, then just kind of move it down and throughout and it should just pop right off like that and as you can see the screen is crystal clear there is no residue left over and then here we have the rear camera protector it is made of tempered glass as well all you need to do is simply peel this back just like that don't touch the underside once you've done that make sure you clean off your lenses and around the lenses as well so this can stick on there really nice then just simply line this up with the camera bumps and press it into place. And that's what it looks like. It is crystal clear, and it doesn't add a lot of bulk to the back of the phone. The only thing I will tell you is if you're using a case like I've been that doesn't have the full cutout, you won't be able to use uh, this camera protector. So you're gonna need to get a case that has a full cutout like this, and then you won't have any problems. So if I put my phone into the case here, I'll show you. As you can see, it fits perfectly into cases like that. It's pretty much flush with the camera bump and it looks perfectly fine. Then we'll test our scratch resistance. So I'm gonna start again with a level five. Then we're gonna move on to a level six. And then finally a level seven. So if we take a closer look here, so there's no scratches at a level five. There are a little bit at a level six and a little deeper at the level seven. So pretty much on par with the regular tempered glass screen protectors. I'm definitely liking the screen protector. It's got everything going for it. Like I said before, we probably could have uh, 
got away with not having bubbles had I just slided it, slid it up uh, just a tad, but everything works on here. Uh, installation was great. So I would definitely recommend this and I'm gonna give this one a thumbs up. Next up is AM Films Tempered Glass Screen Protector with Liquid Adhesive. So here we get three installation packets, three tempered glass screen protectors, three screen preps. Here we have six vials of adhesive, some absorbing pads, some installation pads. We have a little tool for installing the screen protector and a little weight. It also comes with a rear camera protector that is tempered glass, our installation tray, and our UV LED. And now the reason I love this is because it covers your whole phone, which is really nice. The only thing you're gonna need is a USB type C connection to either a power bank or a phone adapter to power the device. Then plug in your UV light just to make sure that it does work. You wanna take two of those little foam pads that I told you about before, turn over your phone and place them on the back of your phone one down at the bottom, and one right below the camera bumps. The next thing I'm going to tell you to do that they don't mention in the instructions is I would probably take these little dust remover stickers and cover up the ports on the bottom of your phone just in case. I'd probably remove my S Pen before I did that. So it should look something like that. Next you wanna take your guide and we're going to place it over our phone just like this, press down over the top of your phone until everything's in place. Once you've done that, make sure that the little pads here are touching against your phone and you can just push them into place just like that. You can also use the levels to make sure that your surface you have this down on is level as well. Then we're gonna take this little plastic guide, we're going to slide it in between these two little posts here, just press it in place as far as it'll go. So now you're gonna need your little metal weight. Put that off to the side. We need two vials of adhesive. So then unscrew the red cap on one of the vials. What we wanna do is we're gonna make two bubbles of the same size. One of the bubbles is going to be directly here in between these two posts. Then the middle of the second bubble is gonna be between these two bottom posts here. So turn this over and then unscrew the black cap. Then once it's all done, you can put the black cap back on and disregard the vial. So there's our first bubble. We do the same thing for the second one. Remove the red cap, turn it upside down, unscrew the black cap. And there we have our two bubbles. So now you're gonna get one of your screen protectors Make sure that the white sticker is on the underside and the little cutout for your camera is going towards the camera on your phone. As we can see here, the little fingerprint sticker is down towards the bottom. So we're going to peel off the underside protector just like this. And then we're going to place the screen protector down over our phone just like this and let the back end rest down on that little slider. If it does touch the bubble, quickly pull this little thing out and then just release it the rest of the way. Once the adhesive has covered the fingerprint sensor, take your little metal weight and gently place it over where your fingerprint is supposed to go and then wait till all the adhesive covers the whole screen. Do not press on the screen protector. Now once the liquid adhesive has covered the whole screen, you're gonna take your UV light we're going to put it over our phone just like this. We're gonna plug it in and let it cure for 15 seconds. We're going to unplug our UV light. We're going to remove the little metal cylinder. We also need to remove our fingerprint sticker. And then we need to remove the phone from the tray very carefully. Just kind of press on the top on your phone, gently, just like that. Then we're going to put our UV light over our phone again and cure for 75 seconds. Once that's done, we'll just unplug the UV light and we're done. How easy was that? 
So everything looks to be really good. There were, there was no leakage of the liquid adhesive. So that's definitely a plus, but I put this on here just in case. Yeah, that looks super clean. Look, nothing, there's no liquid adhesive anywhere on the sides of my phone, on the top. That worked out really well. All right, so let's take a look. Nice and smooth, just like the glass that's on the phone. We do have a nice gap at the bottom of the phone, as well as the top, and there's that cutout for our camera, so you don't have to worry about it interfering with your pictures. We'll test out our S Pen because we already have it out. S Pen working just fine. There's just a slight resistance, just like there is on regular glass. Beautiful. I also don't see any markings from the S Pen, which I would expect because this is glass. Let's test out our fingerprints. Fingerprints still working from before? Maybe. So if your fingerprints don't work from when you input them the first time, just go back in and re-register them. I'll do that now just so you guys can see how well it does register. And there we go, all registered. So we'll go ahead and test that out. Yeah, it works even better now. No problems with the fingerprint sensor, awesome. Looks crystal clear. Again, touch, super smooth, nice and responsive, no issues there whatsoever. Very nice. Now let's go ahead and put it in our case. Very nice. Looks really good. There's a nice gap at the top still. At the bottom, there is still a slight gap, so it's not touching the bottom. On the sides, there looks to be a sl very slight gap as well, so it should be case friendly. I don't see any lifting anywhere. Looking good. Very nice so far. So let's go ahead and move on to our scratch test. So again, we're gonna start off with a level five. Then we're gonna move on to a level six. And then finally a level seven. All right, so let's take a look at the screen here. As you can see, there are no scratches at the level five. There are slight at the level six and a little deeper at the level seven. <laughs> Not bad at all. So I am very pleased with this screen protector. Everything seems to be perfect. As you saw, installation was very easy. I know you can do it. Scratch resistance is definitely good. Fingerprint sensor works. S Pen works. It's case friendly. There's really not anything bad to say about this screen protector. So I would definitely recommend it and I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested to know how to take the screen protector off, it's very easy. All you need to do is get a pick your nail or maybe a credit card and stick one end in underneath one of the corners and just kind of work your way down the phone. As you can see, it is releasing and it just kind of pops off just like that. And as you can see, the phone screen is pristine. There's absolutely no residue left. And then here are the rear camera protectors. These are made of tempered glass as well. And the installation is very easy. Just make sure you clean off all of your lenses and around the lenses with the alcohol wipe. And then you're simply going to peel this back just like this. Don't touch the underside once you've taken it off. Then you just need to line the holes up with the camera bumps on the back of your phone. And then just press that into place. And that's what it's going to look like now on your phone. Now the thing is, if you use something like this and you have a case that doesn't have the total cutouts for your cameras, you're not going to be able to use it. But let's see what happens when we use a case that has a total cutout for it. Okay, so it looks like it fits uh, perfectly fine. If you have a case with the total cutout, it seems to fit in there perfectly fine. So if we look at the side here, as you can see, the camera protector is pretty much flush with the case itself. So it should work out just fine. Just make sure that if you're using a case, it's going to have the full cutout for all of the cameras. Now, as far as fingerprints goes, it does seem to pick up 
some fingerprints as you can see there so you will need to wipe this off if you happen to touch it before you take any of your pictures let's see what happens when we take some pictures from the back here so as far as the picture quality goes it seems to look pretty good I don't really see uh, anything wrong with the pictures here it looks pretty clear to me And as far as scratch resistance goes, we'll, again, we'll start off with a level 5. Then we'll move on to a level 6. And then finally a level 7. And if we take a closer look, we can see that there are no scratches at the level 5. There are very slight at the level 6 and just a little deeper at the level 7 here. So typical scratch resistance for a tempered glass screen protector. And then here we have Whitestone Dome's Dome Glass Premium Screen Protector with liquid adhesive. So here we get three vials of liquid adhesive. You get your UV LED, which will need some sort of a power source, whether it be a power bank or your phone's wall charger. It uses USB Type-C. It has stickers for all your ports and your speaker grill. You get two tempered glass screen protectors. You get an installation packet with a couple more absorbers, your installation tray with bridge, and you get this little rubber piece that we use for the fingerprint sensor. So first we're going to cover all of our ports and our buttons on the side. You're going to use these black stickers right here. I would take out my S Pen. So the bottom of your phone is going to look just like that. And for the buttons, it's going to look just like that. I'd also cover my 5G antenna just in case. Now that your ports are covered, you're going to want to take your jig here. We're going to insert the little absorbers into the sides. It should look something like that. I put one on each side here and one down at the bottom. Then you want to take this little plastic piece here and insert it into the top of the jig, just like this. Press it into place. Then you're going to want to clean off your screen. And then dry it off. Then you're going to take your jig and we're going to place it over your phone, making sure that the S23U is up towards the camera on your phone. Just press it into place until you hear a couple clicks. Just like that. Then we're going to place our speaker grill sticker over this little plastic piece here. Just want to peel that off very carefully. And then just place this over the little piece. Then we want to press this down into place. I would use maybe like a little squeegee if you had one. Or you could probably use the end of this piece here. Just need to make sure that that's covering the speaker grill. Just like that. Then take this little black piece here. We're going to slide it in between the slot on the top here, just like that. Then we're gonna take our bridge and place it into the slots on the jig, just like this. Then you're gonna take one of your vials of adhesive. You're gonna undo the pink cap. You're gonna place it over the little hole in the bridge here, and then undo the black cap until all the liquid adhesive has come out. It only takes a few seconds and put that back on there. I have to be careful because my table, I'm guessing, is not level and the bubble is moving. So just be very careful of that. You can kind of manipulate the jig, take out the bridge, just like that. So now that the little bubble is right here, we want to try to, <laughs> try to keep it there. Now we're going to take one of our screen protectors. You want to make sure that the little camera cutout is facing towards the camera on your phone. You want to peel off the underside just like this, making sure not to touch the underside after you've taken that off. You want to line up the bottom part of the screen protector down at the bottom of the jig and just let this piece rest on the black part there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of push on the bottom of the jig here. I'm going to just manipulate it with both my fingers because it's a lot easier. But what we want to do is we want to get this bubble 
to right in the middle of the screen here to where it's a perfect circle. Then we're gonna slowly just pull this out. The screen protector will go down on top of your phone and the liquid adhesive will start to cover the whole screen. So like I said, once the bubble hits right in the middle here, it should touch the glass and then we'll slowly uh, pull out this little piece here. So we want to wait till it's a full bubble, just like that, then slowly start to pull the little black piece out, falls in place, and just let it cover the whole phone. Don't press on the screen protector while it's doing this. Then you're going to want to get this little eraser ready because that's what we're going to use to put down over the screen here for our fingerprint sensor. So it looks like all of the adhesive has gone all over the phone. So now we're gonna take our little eraser here and we're going to place it over where the fingerprint sensor is supposed to be on the phone. Now we're gonna wait 30 seconds. While it's doing that, you wanna prepare your UV light, plug it in, make sure it's ready to be powered up. Don't turn it on yet. And we're going to cure the screen for 15 seconds at the bottom, 15 seconds in the middle, and 15 seconds on the top. All right, so now we're gonna place the UV light over the bottom and just press the button in once. It automatically counts down so you don't have to worry about doing that. Then 15 seconds in the middle. And then 15 seconds on the top. All right, so now we need to take the phone out of the jig. We'll take our eraser off. Then hold your jig with both hands and press down in the corners with both thumbs very gently. Then make sure you peel off the top here with that sticker, just like that. Then we need to clean off our screen around the sides. All right, so just make sure you got the edges all cleaned up if there was some excess liquid that happened to get out. So now we're gonna do our second curing. We're gonna do 60 seconds now at the top, middle, and bottom. And we're gonna do that two times. So instead of clicking it once, we're gonna click it twice now. Then the middle for 60 seconds. Then the bottom for 60 seconds. And then we'll do that one more time. All right, so let's wipe off the screen and we can peel off our side stickers. So that looks pretty nice. I unfortunately was fortunate enough to get a huge piece of dust underneath the screen here, but that's not the screen protector's fault. Feels really nice, super slick, just like the glass that's on the phone. We do have a nice gap at the top and a nice gap at the bottom so it should be case friendly. It also doesn't come right up to the edges on the sides as well so that's definitely a plus. Let's test out our S Pen while we're here. S Pen works beautifully. There is just a little resistance just like there is on the glass but working perfectly fine. As expected, no marks from the S Pen. Let's test our fingerprints. So fingerprints do seem to be working from before, but we're going to re-input them just so you can see how easily it does it. All right, fingerprints are inputted here. So let's go ahead and test them out. Fingerprints seem to be working just fine. As you can see, it is nice and clear. Touch working flawlessly, no problems there. Very nice. All right, so let's see how well it works with a case. 
Here we have Whitestone Dome's silicone case. It is really nice. As you can see, it fits perfectly. We still have a nice little gap at the top and a gap at the bottom, so it's not touching the case. And there is a slight uh, gap on the side, so it's not touching the case at all, so you don't have to worry about anything lifting. So I'm definitely liking this Whitestone Dome. I've really never have had uh, any issues with any of the Whitestone Dome tempered glass screen protectors on any of my other Galaxy devices. And this one seems to be just the same. Its installation was really easy. There are absolutely no bubbles, no flaws on the screen protector. You can't really count the piece of dust that I had <laughs> underneath the screen. Uh, finger, As far as fingerprints goes, it does pick up a little bit of fingerprints, but not hardly at all. And the little that are there, you can just easily wipe those away without any issues. And it's case friendly. What more could you ask for? So I would definitely recommend this screen protector and I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. So now let's move on to the scratch test. So first we're gonna start off with a number five. Then we're gonna move on to a number six. And then finally a number seven. All right, let's take a look. So as you can see, there are no scratches at the level five. There are slight scratches at the level six and a little deeper at the level seven. So definitely a great screen protector, especially as far as scratch protection goes. I absolutely love this screen protector. It's got a lot of great things going for it. Scratch protection, installation, fingerprint sensor, S Pen, case friendliness. I'm definitely going to give this screen protector a thumbs up. And if you're wondering how easy it is to take off, I would just recommend either using a pick, your fingernail, or a credit card. Just getting one end kind of lifted. As you can see, it's starting to release the adhesive and then just kind of work your way down and around the top. And it comes off just like that. And as you can see, the screen is crystal clear and there's no residue. Just in case you're wondering, it's razor burn. I just shaved. So if you made it to the end of the video with me, thank you so much for all your support. I could not have done this without viewers like you. Now we're gonna go over the screen protectors that I personally liked myself. And if you haven't done so yet, I would definitely recommend you take a look at some of the other screen protectors in the video because there are other good screen protectors that may fit your needs more than they did mine. So I didn't recommend them, but that doesn't mean that they're not good. So I basically narrowed it down to three different categories. One is the tempered glass screen protector that does not use liquid adhesive, the film screen protectors, and the glass screen protectors that do use liquid adhesive. These screen protectors have the best installation process, best scratch protection, work the best with the in-display fingerprint sensor, and were great for S Pen use. So for the tempered glass screen protector that doesn't use liquid adhesive, I would recommend the Milam Doi and I hope I'm saying that right. If you've watched any of my past best and worst videos, you know it is super hard to find a tempered glass screen protector that doesn't use adhesive that works really well. And I just, again, happened to stumble across this online and I thought it was really valuable for you to see. I was really impressed with it and it still remains my best tempered glass screen protector that doesn't use liquid adhesive. So definitely go and check it out. Now when it comes to film screen protectors, I found a couple that worked the best for me. One was the Zag Fusion XTR2 Eco Curve screen protector, and the other was the Whitestone Dome UV Gen Film. Both of these screen protectors had pretty forward installations. They were pretty much bubble free, and they performed really well with the fingerprint sensor and S Pen. So I definitely recommend you check out those videos. Then when it comes to the tempered glass screen protectors that do use liquid adhesive, I found three that stood out among the rest. One was AM Films tempered glass screen protector that uses liquid adhesive. I've always had a good experience with AM Films screen protectors. The installation process was really easy. It works really well with the fingerprint sensor, S Pen, and it has good scratch protection. So I would definitely recommend checking them out. The next one I take a look at is Whitestone Dome's premium dome glass. Again, I've always had a good experience with Whitestone Dome. They have a really easy installation process. The install is always really clean. It works really well with the fingerprint sensor. It's got great scratch protection. 
So I would definitely recommend checking that screen protector out as well. And the third screen protector that I've had some really good experiences with is the IMB ZBK screen protector. Again, this one has a pretty straightforward installation process. It works really well with the S Pen. It's got good fingerprint sensor detection. It's got good scratch protection and it comes with quite a few extra screen protectors and rear camera lens protectors. So I think it has a really good value. So definitely make sure you check them out as well. So I hope you found the screen protector that you absolutely loved. And if you did, let me know in the comments which one you picked out and why. If this video helps you out at all, please hit that like button. It only takes a second for you and it greatly helps out the channel. And it also lets me know that you like the video and you want me to continue making future videos just like this. Again, if you have any screen protector recommendations for future videos, definitely make sure you let me know in the comments below. And thank you everyone for all your support. I appreciate each and every one of you. And if you haven't subscribed, definitely make sure you do and hit that notification bell to let you guys know when I put out future videos. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Later.